Hello and happy Friday to you. Another week has gone by and we're all still alive and God's still on the throne and, and uh, peace reigns in the world. And every, every day that the devil doesn't win is another day of victory for the Lord Jesus. And I am so glad you can join with me today. Uh, I have a guest that is just is mind-blowing and you will be so blessed by what Miles Holmes has got to say. And I'm interested to know who's watching right now and where you're watching me from. Um, I look forward to this hour so much every day that we can share and talk. I hope the people that I'm bringing to you and the friends of my life um, is, just, is just wonderful. And um, as, as, they enrich, as they enrich my life, I know they're enriching yours. And we're getting tremendous responses from all over the world. And we just appreciate your kindness so much. So let me know if you're watching me and where you're watching me from. And um, all my Daily Faith family, I'm just, I'm just excited to be with you today. As you know, in the last wee while, America has been rocked with two terrible events. One was a virus from China. And um, if you remember when the president spoke about this Chinese virus, how the opposition went howling and squealing and, oh my God, what are you doing? And the more we are learning about this virus and its origins and how it was hidden from the rest of the world, they hid this thing from the rest of the world. Um, the president is being justified in his aggravation with the Chinese. Let me tell you something. The Chinese is a communist system and they, they have one thought in their mind. They want to dominate the United States of America because if they can dominate America, the rest of the world doesn't count. All of Europe are pacifist in nature and they, they don't have the economic strength nor the military strength to resist the force of China. There is one bastion of freedom in the world and that is the United States of America. And we're going to be talking about that today in the program. And then the, the, the second thing that's, that's rocked our country has been this, term, this horrendous murder, torture and murder of this, the, the man uh, George Floyd in Minnesota. And we all watched, we all watched as this man was murdered, pure and simple. And I'm reading more and more about the fact that he... Um, he and the cop knew each other. I didn't know, know if you know this, but they, they knew each other and there was bad blood between them. So the premeditation thing may play a larger part in this than we, than we first realized. And um, I'm sure that will all be discovered. But, but what kills me and what makes me so upset is the two unrelated things has, has been dumped on the doorstep of, of President Trump and he doesn't deserve it. Um, during the pandemic, when, 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 when Cuomo in New York was demanding um, beds, he, he provided all the beds they needed, all the ventilators they needed. He, he went into a tear of, of literally um, sequestering and getting American companies to, to, to build these things, to make things, um, to, to suffice the need that we have. And, um, and yet he still gets blamed for it. So we're going to be talking about that today with my dear friend, um, Miles Holmes. So you're going to sit back, fasten your seatbelts. You're going to be blessed by this. Bride, and I'm so glad you've joined me. Beth, thank you for, for, for watching it today. And Pamela and Tim and Twyla and Tom Nolan from TCT. If you want to see a great Christian television network, TCT is the one that you need to, to watch. It's a tremendous, a tre I, know, I, I know all of this. It's a family that have a passion for the gospel. And Tom, we love you very much. And we thank you for your support and your care of our ministry. So where else are you watching me from? I love to know the city. I, I like to know which, which country you're watching from so I can get an idea of, of, uh, of where you're watching. And also on your screen, on your device, there's a share button and there's also have a, a watch party. And I want you to hit that watch party and you can invite friends of yours personally from you from your from your friends and you can say hey watch this and 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 we'll grow the audience and we're just we're amazed that one or two of our programs have had forty thousand views and uh, so i know i know with uh, miles he is opening his network to two million 
two million subscribers to his his page so we're going to be talking about that in a few moments but uh, marcia and lee and my cousin alec ross from scotland he's the best gardener i've ever met in my life his garden is stunning alec you need to send me some pictures of your garden this year because um, i've never seen such a beautiful garden in my life as you have in peterhead scotland and we love you very much in market and um, so we just we are so thrilled that you could join us and uh, you're going to meet a, a dear friend of mine we've known each other for decades and this man has taken up the challenge to present the truth about the political battles that are going on you you are only told mostly complete and utter fabrications lies that the press puts out and once in a while they're they're discovered and and they're exposed and there's, there's been a few beauties this last few days and uh, i'm sure miles home knows about this uh, but we are just so glad you're here and we welcome you today to daily faith I have a cousin in Scotland, well I had, he passed away when he was only 34 years of age. His name was Michael Stephen and he wrote a chorus. He ended up with diabetes and he, he, he ended up blind. But he wrote a song when he was young and, and fit and, and it, it, it's been one of my favorite choruses for many, many years. In fact, if ever I, sit, I don't play the piano very well, but if I sit down and play the piano, nine times out of ten, this song comes out of my spirit and I sing the chorus. And I was sitting one night in my house, singing the chorus of the song, What a Wonderful Man, What a Wonderful Name. Today he's my help, tomorrow the same. When dark shadows fall, I can feel him so near. What a wonderful man, what a wonderful name. And as I did that, I had a very strange experience. I began to sing verses right along with the song. And uh, I recorded it, and I want you to enjoy today. Watch this, What a Wonderful Man. His name is above them all His hand reaches when I fall His ear hears me when I call What a wonderful man I'll never forget the day When I heard my Savior say, I'll walk with you all the way. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful name. Today he's my help Tomorrow the same When dark shadows fall I can feel him so near What a wonderful man what a wonderful name So all through your night of fear The Savior is standing near the dawning will soon be here What a wonderful man 
He's given his name to you Above all, he's standing true There's nothing my God can't do What a wonderful man What a wonderful man What a wonderful name Today he's my help Tomorrow the same When dark shadows fall I can feel him so near What a wonderful man What a wonderful man What a wonderful man What a wonderful name Today he's my help Tomorrow the same When dark shadows fall I can feel him so near What a wonderful man What a wonderful man He's a wonderful man With a wonderful name No matter where you are today and what circumstance you are in, you better understand something above everything else. There's a wonderful man called Jesus who is with you. He says he sticks closer than a brother. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you're going through the storm of your life, let me tell you this from experience. He never is further away than the whisper of his name. And I pray for you today that the strength of heaven will come into your circumstance and into your heart and life to let you know that God is on your side and if God be for you, who can be against you? And um, I, don't, I don't consider myself a singer at all. I like to tell stories through song, but I'm not a singer. And uh, I only sing in a couple of places. I sing for Jim Baker when he makes me sing when I go there. And there's a church down in uh, Fort Myers, Florida, First Assembly. And Pastor Dan Betzer makes me sing every time I go there. And, and I don't know why. And, uh, but what can I tell you? But he's a wonderful man. You can, you can see more of our music, the original Cameron songs, All the Holy Ghost Will Set You For The Dancing. If you go to philipdcameron.com forward slash music, and all the albums are there, and, all, and just click on the songs and, and listen at your own leisure. And it's free; doesn't cost anything. And uh, you might want to you might want to check that out. I am so excited about today's guest. He he's been in my life for many years, and uh, he he pastors a great church. But God put him in the, this most ridiculous. We still, when we talk, we still can't believe it. But God put him in an amazing position to be a spokesperson um, for a page now that has over 2 million participants and, and subscribers. And it's uh, and I'm going to let him tell us more about this because this blows my mind. Miles Holmes, welcome today to Daily Faith. I'm so glad you're here. Philip, if I did nothing else today, I, I'm so happy that I, I listened to and experienced that powerful worship. In fact, when this program is over, I'm going to go back and probably listen to it three or four times again. There's nothing like the presence of God. Absolutely. Now, listen, I, I, I got my theology right. We're never out of the presence of God, 
but we're not always aware of the presence of God. Absolutely. And what worship does, it helps us to acknowledge God's presence. Yep. And then there's healing, power, glory, health, Absolutely. healing, virtue, peace, blessing in, in once the you get, of God. And that, once you get in the stream, you get wit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, that song. Great to be with you. How are you it doing? Is, it's wonderful. That song, as I said, the chorus was written by my cousin 50 years ago. And um, the verses, the, the, the two verses I wrote, just one night I got inspired and, and within, oh, within three, four minutes, that whole song was complete. Did he so travel we, with your family in ministry when I have met him years ago? I, I, you may have. He traveled with my father and his brothers a couple of times. And um, okay. he, he, uh, he, he had diabetes and uh, yeah. it suddenly just, it just went rampant. And, and as a young boy, I remember he, he had no saliva gland. His saliva didn't work. So his mouth was always dry and he was blind. And, and I thought it was ironic when dark shadows fall, I can feel him yes. so near. He had no idea that oh, he was writing God. about his future. And um, he passed away only 34 years of age. It was so sad. Yeah. But we are so excited to have you with us because we are living, since the last time I spoke to you, it seems like the whole world has caught on fire again. You, you, you can't even, it, you can't even believe um, the speed of these news cycles. The last time I was talking to you, the virus from China had, had, was, was ra wrecking havoc on the world. And we talked about that a little bit. And then since that time, we, have, we are now in this insane um, uh, racial tension that's, that's, that's been brought Incredible. about by the horrendous murder of George Floyd. And uh, I, I know, tell us about your, your sight that you have and give us a perspective on what you see happening today in America. Well, again, I'm thrilled to be with you, Philip, and I love Thank your ministry. You. Always have from from the time I was a young boy, and you were a young teenager. Um, just just powerful, powerful ministry, and you're still impacting the world. I want to talk about that. But I, our mutual friend Lance Wall now said this just last week. He said, is, "Is it more than coincidental? Is it perhaps something we should take a look at that that after eight or nine weeks of the church being shut down, shut out?" quieted yeah. that demonic manifestations demonic devastation is happening on our streets that's something to yeah. consider isn't it I but the that. church has the answer and by the way the church has the only answer politics does not have the answer no. um education does not have the answer only the church the true church that's willing to speak up that's willing to be bold that's willing to tell the truth people people ask me you know why why did god entrust you with this um, platform of two million people, and I, I honestly think I I tried to evaluate. Tried to. It's not because I'm that smart. It's not because I'm I'm more bright than other people. I think it's because God knows I'll tell the truth, and yeah. I'm just bold enough to tell the truth. And people are hungry for truth because they're not hearing it anywhere else. Yeah. And the church has got to speak up. So uh, devastation on our streets. Um, and of course, the left, the Democrats, anarchists, mob, Black Lives yep. Matter, Antifa, everyone. No, hold on a second. Is using this. Hold on a second. Let's yes. get. I I was really disturbed when I saw a whole bunch of churches, and a whole lot of ministries, put Black Lives Matter on their page. I believe yeah. the Black Lives Matter. I believe the black life, I believe all lives matter, but I believe the black lives matter. I'm the brother of a black man. My brother Neil was adopted by my parents when he was 10 months old. And my only brother is a black man. So um, I, I, I know what racism is. Watching it helplessly as a blonde white person, watching a, a, a younger, he's younger than I by 10 or 15 years, to watch this young boy go through this horrendous, in America, I mean, he traveled with me and played sure. the bass guitar on TV. And we were we, we were we would go to churches, and the pastor would, would cancel the service because Neil was with me, and or we couldn't go to people's houses because Neil. So I mean, I know I know racism from a from a horrendous position of watching my brother that I love with all my life, and and watching him getting hurt and can do nothing about it because hey, I'm just I'm a white I'm a white guy. So there's a difference between caring about the equality of black people and any abuse and any racism that they face 
to, to buying and swallowing hook, line, and sinker, the, the communistic, godless profile of this organization that have called themselves Black Lives Matter. That is two completely well, me, different things. Absolutely. Let me be as blunt and as, and as truthful as I possibly can. And let me lose a few friends again. <laughs> because here's the truth. Black Lives, any preacher or any Christian who supports the Black Lives Matter movement either does not know what the Black Lives Matter movement is about, or yep. they're a part of a demonic, satanic, globalist, one world order, um, hellish plan to destroy yep. America. I'll That's say true. it one more time. Any preacher, any pastor, or any Christian who supports the Black Lives Matter movement organization is uninformed on yeah uninformed or they're actually supporting satanic demonic hellish plans to destroy america and conservative yep. blacks know this our brothers and sisters i, I just had an article that uh, i read yesterday i think top 10 reasons i won't support the black lives matter movement written by a black brother you can find it on townhall.com. It's, it's, and it's up on the screen. I, it's up on the screen right Excellent. now. So we're showing them as you talk, they can see it. It's by Ryan Boomberg. Absolutely. Just, yeah, exactly. Now, just some of the points he makes, he's a black brother and he says, the Black Lives Matter movement, the premise isn't true. He said, I hate racism, but I hate when racism is used as a political weapon. And yeah. you have to know the facts, okay? The, the truth. Of, of the statistics. He says, a comprehensive 2019 study concluded that white officers are not, are not more likely to shoot minority civilians than non-white officers, okay? Mm. In loss of tragic, every loss of life is tragic, but Washington Post database on police involved death puts for, um, things into a further context. Um, the facts do not support the idea that um, the police forces are racist. The, another thing he says, I'm not going to read all 10, just a couple here, highlight, highlight them. He says, Black Lives Matters has no goal of forgiveness or reconciliation. None. No. no goal of forgiveness or reconciliation. He also says, Black Lives Matters movement, pay attention, preacher, pay attention, pay attention, mega church pastor. They heavily promote homosexuality and yes, transgenderism. Yep. Absolutely. They yep. completely ignore fatherhood. He lists 10 reasons. Let me give you two more. They demand reparations, which is unreasonable, unmathematic, it, uneconomic. It does not work. Unsustainable. And they want to abolish prisons and police forces. Black Lives Matter. Yep. Any thinking white person or black person or Hispanic person cannot support Black Lives Matters. Let, let, let me tell you what somebody else said. Black Lives Matters is only concerned with black lives under the hand of a policeman. They do not believe that all black lives matters. Let me prove it to you. They're not concerned with Planned Parenthood, which was started by Ma Margaret Sanger for the express purpose Absolutely. of diminishing the black population in America. That's Say that again. History. Margaret Sanger, listen Margaret to me. Sanger, Planned Parenthood Margaret was started because she wanted to depopulize and, and depopulate exactly. rather black people in America. That's the reason why Planned Parenthood exists. That's a foundation. So why doesn't Black of, of Lives black... Matter um, protest yeah. Planned Parenthood clinics? Because they don't care about all black lives. More than 70% why are they of... Not more than 70% of abortion clinics in America are within walking distance in black neighborhoods. And they, I think that's not it, a mistake. That's it's, on purpose. It's like 17 million is a number that sticks in my mind. 17 million black babies have been aborted. Uh, and in t I mean, you imagine just, just numbers. You, you were talking numbers in America. The, the Hispanics, the Hispanic population has now surpassed the black population as far as a demographic in this country. Yeah. If those black yeah. babies hadn't been killed in Planned Parenthood, that yeah. that would be reversed. 
And the larger exactly. the percentage of the population there is, the stronger the voice is. And they have diminished exactly. the black voice in America by killing the babies, millions yeah. upon millions of babies, and those black lives don't seem to matter. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's an absolute utter hypocrisy in the Black Lives Matter movement that, that any thinking person, any yeah. thinking person has to acknowledge. And of course, Black Lives Matter movement has no issue with all the black on black crime in Chicago. Two weeks ago, was it? The yeah. worst night of violence in 60 years, 60 years. Yeah. in Chicago. More yeah. people died in one weekend than in 60 years. The problem's not getting better, but the answer is found in the Word of God. The yeah. answer is found in good theology. We're all one in Christ. You're Absolutely. my brother. You're my sister. We're all related to Adam yeah. and Eve and even closer to that. We're all related to Noah. We're Noah's yeah. kids. So we're all brothers and sisters, and we've got, to, we've got to stand for the truth, but not allow the message of the gospel to be diluted or destroyed yeah. by political movements that literally have the destruction of America at their heart. What I wrote, what I wrote when, when I saw this wholesale, um, you know, we support Black Lives Matter. Uh, what I wrote was, the problem is this, that if you, if you accept the Black Lives organization, now Black Lives Matter, but the organization is a totally separate entity that has a political exactly. agenda, not a race agenda, a political agenda. And I, and I said this, if you guys, if, if the pastors and ministers um, put a, put a, uh, you know, put up their, their Black Lives Matter thing on their screen, what's going to happen is down the road, when the, they begin to discover what Black Li the Black Lives Organization stands for, which is defunding the police, pro-abortion, pro-LGB, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. All of those things, that's what that's on their platform. That's what they push and believe in. Then the church that's is going correct. to have to stand up and say, oh, no, 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 we don't believe that. That's not right. And then what's going to happen is they're going to turn on the church and say, oh, yeah, you're all racist. That's why you don't support us. And I'd rather right. clarify what I believe early on than have to change yeah. my, my tone and, and stand against this organization and let me say this, let me say this again clearly so no one thinks that Philip Cameron and Miles Holmes are racist. I think that racism is demonic and evil. I think that what happened absolutely. to George Floyd was absolutely... In fact, I had, I had a, a dear friend, Bishop Ron Webb, on with me the day after it happened. And he's a, a great black leader, and we spoke about this and talked this over. Um, Bishop Weldon Boone's coming on next week with me, and we'll talk about this. And he's a, he's a tremendous black leader. I mean, these men are, are giants in the community. And so yeah. I, I, was a, I was abhorred by this event. When I watched that thing on TV, it was just, it was just, Absolutely. it was demonic. However, yeah. I am not going to, I'm not going to swallow the lies of the devil and the enemy to put myself in yeah. the position to defend that thing that I don't believe in. I believe that exactly. all, all people who are black matter. Their lives are important to God and they are equal to me completely. But I will not accept an organization called Black Lives Matter. I don't know if you know this, but if you make a donation, if you, if you have a little exercise of Googling, search, if you make a donation to Black Lives Matter, they will send you to an Act Blue page. Act Blue. Act Blue is a clearinghouse for all socialist and 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 radical left agendas and they have given over a hundred million dollars to Bernie Sanders to um, uh, Elizabeth Warren to every every organization it let me read this to you it's an organization established in June 2004 that enables Democrats progressive groups and left-leaning nonprofits to raise money on the internet by providing them with online fundraising software it is stated its stated mission is to empower small dollar donors and they have had well over a billion dollars given to them so what's happening is 
that Black Lives Matter, because this organization is a left-leaning, they are against the police, they want to defund the police in your community, they want to have abortions. Um, they gave, Andrew's telling me on my screen, they gave $184 million to Bernie Sanders, they gave $118 million to Joe Biden, they gave $93 million to Warren, Elizabeth Warren, and um, um, Pete, Pete got 63 million, I think, is that right, Andrew? 63 million? So when this is, this is what you're, if you're standing for that, this is what you're standing for. And I just don't think Christians know this, and they've, they've right. swallowed the thing hook, line, and sinker, and we are going to have to stand up and say, I don't believe, oh, whoa, 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 I don't believe in abortion. And the minute you do that, the same group that will take your support is going to turn around on you and you'll have people outside your church door protesting against yeah. you because you are a racist. Because all the other fi yeah. fine lines, all the small print will be taken away and you change your mind and you're a coward and you're a racist. And I just don't think exactly. that was a wise thing. Exactly. And of course, Philip, you're talking to the true church, the Bible-believing church, the, the yeah. church that still believes what the word of God says about family and life is is valuable. There's another church in America, of course, that supports all of this. The liberal, yeah. left leaning, yeah. left leaning Democrat church that yeah. that has no problem with homosexuality. They'll have a gay they'll have a gay pastor. They'll marry gays. They have no problem with having transgender bathrooms. We're not talking to that church. They're they're part of the satanic, um, left wing, uh, diabolical. Yeah hellish plan to destroy America's greatness. Yeah. But we're talking to the true church that has to be involved, has to be aware. And and some folks will tell me, you know, after hearing some of this, I, I didn't know, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of this. Well, then don't post something unless you're aware of it. Absolutely. Stop just jumping on everybody's bandwagon. Yeah. Stop just saying, well, I've got to do it because all my friends are doing it. No, just wait till you hear from somebody that you that you respect Wait yeah. till you hear the truth, because it's still true. The truth will set you free and keep yeah. you free. Uh, in Birmingham, um, Chris Hodges is the pastor of one of the largest churches in America. I know him. I mean, I was with him. Uh, Larry Stockstill a dear friend of both of ours. Larry Stockstill is like the father of the ARC movement. And um, we were there for Larry's 50th anniversary. And Chris was there and he preached and he stood up. And he says, look, I'm a Bethany boy. And then the church is Bethany down in Baton Rouge. Yeah. And I mean, he just, he says, I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the movement, of this, the, the power of the Holy Ghost. And I mean, he, he blew my mind yeah. to be quite frank with you. And, and he liked something that I would like. That you would like because yeah. it was truth. Yeah. Sure. And and a people tweet. have a tweet. And people have taken this thing and are hell bent on destroying one of the greatest men of God in America today, who is reaching more who's people. Touching who's touching his community. Whose church is multicultural from the top to the bottom, that has done more in the social aspect of caring for people yeah. than any other church by a thousand miles in Alabama, and they have yeah. broken leases with him from buildings he was using for churches, one of his campus churches, they, the, the Birmingham Housing Authority and public school system have cut all ties with him because he yeah. liked the tweet. And this yeah. man that, that I know hasn't got a racist bone or thought in his being. You, no. Let me tell you, now listen to what I'm saying, folks. These people are ruthless and brutal and have no mercy. They don't want justice. They want revenge. And they want as many people destroyed. And I, I often say this, they, they, they don't mind noise, but they mind this kind of noise. They will stand yeah. against the gospel and what, and what we stand for. They hate what the gospel represents. Well, the, the left absolutely wants to destroy the church and the message of the church. Yeah. If, if the left gets their way, they would have Philip Cameron and Miles Holmes in prison. Yeah. That's the truth. Now, you, you might not want to acknowledge that. Oh, might that's want, true. Not like to think, how could that happen in America? I guarantee you there are people in Germany in the 1920s and early 30s that would say, that's not going to happen here. We're intellectual. Absolutely. We're cultural. We're a free society. The left absolutely wants to criminalize what I think 
and when I speak. And Chris Hodges is a perfect example perfect. Of, of the left's power to to distance yeah. them, to cancel someone, a uh, cancel a contract to lease high school buildings. If you don't, if you just like a tweet that they don't appreciate, <laughs> absolutely shocking. It's insane. But that's where America's going if we don't reelect Donald Trump and get a Republican yeah. House and a Republican Senate. And why would a preacher say that? Because this preacher understands what's at stake for Absolutely. my grandchildren. Absolutely. I understand that. Listen, I, I was so disturbed. I, I'm so incensed. A this is my angry face, okay? Because <laughs> I can be angry and still love people. This is my angry face. Um, I'm so incensed, angered at the insane comments that preachers and politicians make. Trey Gowdy, just the other day, in an interview, made this amazing statement that I laughed at and made me angry at the same time. And he's quoting preachers, because I've heard other preachers say this. Mega church pastors say this kind of thing all the time. This is what he said. Jesus, wait for this, you can laugh along with me. Jesus is neither a Republican or a Democrat. I heard that and I laughed and I want to say to him, hey, Jesus is not an American, <laughs> okay? <laughs> He's not an American. Yeah. He doesn't have to pick. Yeah. But listen closely to me. If Jesus were alive today living in the USA, do you honestly think Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the part of the Holy Trinity, could he support the Democrat platform, which is for homosexuality, transgenderism, the Equality Act, which is criminalizing church yeah. and, and preachers? Do you think yeah. he, could, he could support um, gay marriage? Do you think for one second he'd support all booing God at a national convention? Or do you think no. he would support a political system that wants to hold up the Bible in front of a church? It, the other thing that incensed me, made me angry and got this angry, angry look on my face was preachers, preachers who were mad at Donald Trump for holding a Bible up in front of a church. Can you imagine yeah. that? Yeah. A president holding a Bible up in front of a church and having a preacher get mad at that? Um, Al Sharpton, who I will not call a reverend, but no. Al Sharpton at a funeral. By the way, George Floyd had, what, four or five funerals, at least four? Incredible. Al Sharpton saying that Donald Trump holding a Bible up in front of a church is an example of wickedness in high places. That's an example of wickedness in high places? No. Yeah. What's an example of wickedness in high places is every single um, Democrat contender, including Biden, say he's yeah. for transgenderism, he's for the Equality Act. It'll yeah. be the number one um, priority of his administration, if God forbid he's elected, to yeah. to make the Equality Act law. It's incredible that any preacher, any Christian, could even remotely consider supporting Democrat Party or their platform or their policies. Yeah. It's be, it's it's above my pay grade to analyze a Christian who can say I can support the Democrats. It's insane. Well, when when the last election took place, I said repeatedly, this is the most important election in American history, because I believe that if Hillary Clinton had been elected, we would have fallen off a cliff, not knowing, yeah. not knowing with all of this stuff coming out now about Comey and, and, and all of this evil that they were trying to, they, they tried a coup. They tried to take a president out of office. And Absolutely. it is only now at the end of his first term, only now beginning to be exposed and ho hold the phone, wait it's until amazing. you see what's going to happen in the next few weeks because things are going to happen that you would not believe. Yeah. But what they did and was Philip, they- remember the- uh, Go ahead. No, go ahead. Remember that the Democrats were the ones that say, were saying if Donald Trump was not elected, they, he would not accept it. He would not accept. But they're doing exactly what they Same were accusing thing. him of exactly. doing, which he didn't do. Absolutely. It's incredible. Well, they, th what they did was they, they made this huge thing about Trump. And Miles, I'll be honest with you. If, if, la if the last election was important, this coming election is completely off the charts for the yeah. if, if what will happen is this and, and this is let me some point some things out 
Donald Trump, there are things about him that make my teeth sore. There are things that he says sometimes that makes me, I go, oh, don't take that tweet away from him. I, I get all that. He's not a politician, he's a businessman. A rough, crude, go for the throat, fight till you die politi uh, businessman that has not had the years of smoothness and talking nice and then sticking under a, a, a knife in your ribs or your back when you turn around. Yeah. But here's facts. He is the most pro-church, pro-Christian president that there has ever been in America. There's a, thing called the, right. the, there's a thing called the Johnson Amendment. Put there by Lyndon Johnson that, that put a gag on the, on the mouth of the church. That if a church, if a minister like Miles or myself spoke like we're talking just now, we would lose our tax-exempt status from the government. And, and Trump was the first president since Lyndon Johnson to say, I want to hear what the pastors have got to say. He is the most pro-choice president that there's ever pro -life. been. Pro-life. Pro-life, sorry. Pro-life president. He has done what all the other guys, including Reagan, and I was, I'm, I'm the biggest fan that Reagan has ever had. I walked around his, his um, library in California and cried the entire way. It was the most emotional. It was, I was embarrassed at myself, reliving his presidency. But, but Trump, by miles, has stood up for the for the church for the unborn and in fact i was watching him yesterday i was watching him yesterday miles and he was out in california dallas sorry having a, a round table and on the right to his left right on the tv screen was a man called harry jackson bishop harry jackson and he's a church in dc that i go and preach in i mean harry's a bishop jackson's a friend of mine and I, I said to Andrew, when in the world, and, and Jensen Franklin and Marcus Lamb and all these guys that are my friends. And are, he was at are, Robert Morris's church. And Robert Morris was there. And, and what I'm yes. saying, Andrew has met, I haven't met Robert Morris, but Andrew has. And Andrew said to me, Dad, this is insane that I'm watching the president of the United States with two guys, two men that I have known and met on each side of him. Yeah. That, that has never happened before. The church Never. has got a voice in this man's head and his heart. And, and he is looking to faith leaders continuously asking, what do I do with this? Give me some counsel about this. And, and the, the, the arrogance that some folk think that he has is not seen. We have, we have um, private faith um, calls that, you, that we, you, you're, I'm sure you're part of as well. And yes. I mean, he is listening to what the church is saying. He wants to please Amen. God. He may, he may and be he's the most. Go ahead. Yeah. And he's the most pro-Israel president, not just by policy, by action. By action. What he's done for Israel, how he's supporting Israel, has never been done in American history. No. Nope. And, and there's still, in this Bible... There is still a promise. If you bless Israel, if you bless the seed of Abraham, uh, I will yes, bless you. Absolutely. Th there's an absolute connection between yep. the prayers of God's people for this man. Yep. On, on the, the page that I moderate with more than 2.1 million followers, yes. the most popular thing I do is a prayer on Saturday night. It's had as much as 700,000 engagements. Wow. People wow. know that we've got to pray for this man. Wow. We've got to pray for his wow. wife, for his marriage, yeah. for his children, for yeah. his cabinet, for the administration, because they're under vicious daily assault. Another page I manage with 58,000 followers called Battle of the Republic, and a show I do on all these pages is called Battle of the Republic, because the Republic is under vicious attack. Absolutely. Ben Franklin was asked, what have you given to us when he came out of the Constitutional Convention? And he said to a lady, I've given you a a republic if you can keep it if you can, if keep, you can it. keep it absolutely and this election is about keeping the republic yeah. because the democrats want to change the the amendments they want to change the first amendment absolutely. they want to change the second amendment they yep. want to destroy the constitution they believe it's a living the electoral college that, the electoral college yeah, which absolutely. if if that passes if they destroy the electoral college california and new york will determine who the president is both of those absolutely loony left states 
And if, if, they, if, if, if they destroy the electoral college, and that's what they talk about with a fervency, we've got to stop this thing, because what, yeah. what it does is the electoral college evens the playing field across America. Exactly. So that, that, that population-heavy states like New York and like California that would decide the election year in and year out, every season, whatever they yeah. chose, is what we would have to live with. And uh, exactly. the, the, Trump has suffered three years of uh, the Russian collusion, Russia, 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 no evidence. <laughs> Six months of impeachment. Yes. Now listen to me. While the Democrats were trying to impeach Donald Trump, there was a we think called the Hunan virus that was taking hold yeah. in the world. And the whole of America had their nose stuck to impeachment. And they knew it wouldn't work. They knew it wouldn't pass yeah. the Senate, but they did it for pure spite so that nancy Absolutely. pelosi can say we impeached him and he'll always be impeached right. and and because america was was possessed by this thing the the virus if trump hadn't stopped chinese people the, the china um, um, embargo and, and, and flights coming in from china america would have would have had 10 or 15 million people dead yeah. But we were so yeah. caught up in this nonsense impeachment that what happened was that it, it, no one no one paid attention to it. And then the yeah, CDC exactly. and HO, WHO said, oh, it's no big deal. I saw Fauci saying, it's not a big deal. It, it'll, it, it won't have a great impact. And then all of a sudden, oh, my God, they end, they end the world. And, and, and if Trump hadn't acted to, to stop travel from China, the Chinese did not stop travel internationally. But yeah. they stopped travel within China and they isolated Absolutely. 14 million people, I believe it was, in Hunan and to, to, to keep the, the, the virus there. So Beijing and Peking were unaffected. So while we are all yeah. still falling around like drunk people with this, the, the side effects of this, of this virus, churches closed down, businesses closed down, yeah. the loss of, of countless thousands of mom and pop stores, China's back up Incredible. back to speed again. And no one Incredible. seems to see it and get mad, and and so the, we've we've had we've had the impeachment, we've had months and months of the COVID virus, and everything suddenly becomes Donald Trump's fault. It blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. When when you when you consider that the left and the Democrats want to destroy the Constitution, want to destroy our free speech, our right of assembly. And our freedom of religion, which yeah. is churches gathering together, they there are some governors that are suggesting churches in their state may want to shut down for a year and two, and they're talking about that in Canada. It's incredible. But, but when you realize, and I, I use this term very carefully, inspired, there's a level of inspiration in the Word of God that no other book, no other literature has. The I Bible mean. is the inspired God, God-breathed Word of God. But in one sense, in another sense, the Constitution of the United States is actually inspired as well. I believe God blessed these men with wisdom beyond I believe the world. How would they Absolutely. have known the issues we'd have in 2020 yeah. with the Electoral College, with freedoms, with liberties? Um, it's uh, absolutely incredible. We've got to stand for the Constitution and for our freedoms and, and yes. be more spiritually aware that there's satanic attacks, demonic, hellish attacks. Listen. If you're not praying right now, you're not going to hear from God. Yeah. You know, if you're not fasting and praying, I wrote a book a few years ago called Fasting and Praying. I put, and, um, uh, now listen, not, it, it's, I want, it's a powerful tool. How can folk it's that book? Uh, how can people get that book from from you, uh, Miles? Just Amazon.com or Barnes and Noble. But it's okay. it's it's probably more powerful now than it ever has been because it, I give 21 days of guidance on how to pray, fasting and praying. Because I get so frustrated with a lot of folks saying. Well, I'm fasting television, or I'm fasting yeah. the internet, or I'm fasting donuts. You know, no, you're not fasting yet. You, <laughs> you've got, you've got to get alone with God, put, it, put away the, the plate. And keep, the, and, keep, Philip, keep it up, will you please keep that up? Th that's it there no on problem. the. That's it on the screen right now. Fasting for yeah. breakthrough: a guide to fasting prayer in faith, and you a can get it on Amazon, faith. and you can order that yeah. even and, as and we I speak. Would just say, Sure. I would just say, if you're not fasting and praying, if you don't have a, a lifestyle of fasting and praying, you're not going to get breakthroughs that you need. Every single breakthrough in my life, whether it was financial or my next 
uh, time in ministry. Um, every single breakthrough has come in my life after a, a long season of intensive prayer and fasting. I'd encourage people to get it. But back to the political, the political um, uh, day we're living in, the cultural hour, the satanic attack against our freedoms and our liberties. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I have friends that say to me, why don't you just preach about the coming of Jesus? Well, I am preaching about the coming of Jesus, but we're living in this yeah. day, this hour. And I thank God that my grandfather yeah. fought in World War I. He was waiting for Jesus to come. And mine. But because, yeah, he was waiting for Jesus to come. He knew that Jesus could come at any moment. So do I. But my grandchildren may be living in this world, in this culture, in 50 yeah. years if Jesus doesn't come. And I've got to fight for their future. My fifth grandchild is on the way. How many do you have? Six. How many grandchildren do you have? One more Six. than you. Wow. <laughs> My fifth grandchild is on the way, and I'm fighting for their future, for their freedom. So Absolutely. That, so that they have a, a, a nation that we recognize. Yeah. If, if we don't fight, if we just give it up, and we just say, well, let the left, God's will is going to happen anyhow. What a no. stupid thing to say. No. God's it, will doesn't always happen. It it's reminds me. Will that people are, yeah. It, it reminds me of this town that was having a vote for the mayor, and there was two guys running: a godly man and a total evil. Just so all the churches decided to really get behind the good man, and uh, so they called prayer meetings. So all June election day, the churches were packed with people praying, God, save, save our town from this evil man, save our town. So in the evening when the, the votes were counted, the evil man won by a landslide. Because all the Christians were in the churches praying and they weren't in the voting exactly. booth voting. And um, we've got to pray like it depends on God, but we've got to act like it depends on us. And I'm Scottish. I came from, to America when I was 13 years of age. I've been a citizen for 30 odd years. And, and I, I look at America. I, had, I love this country. I, I love this. I'm, I'm not a Scotsman that sits in America. I'm part of some expat groups on, on Facebook and stuff. And you read these folks saying, oh, I long for Scotland or I long for England. Never, yeah. It never enters my mind. When I came to America at 13 years of age, I knew I was an American in here. It was the weirdest Wonderful. thing. I remember taking off, flying back to Scotland after our first visit and, and me sitting. I was 14 and I was looking out the window as New York. We, we took off from John F. Kennedy in, in New York City. And I remember watching the city disappear behind the plane. And I, I remember weeping, 14. I remember weeping and saying, God, whatever it takes, I'm going to make this place my home. And I became, wow. a, I, I became a citizen when Ronald Reagan was in the White House. And I, Amazing. And I, I, I passionately love America. And I can't understand Amen. for the life of me how people will tear down and criticize and, and, and by their words. There's life and death in the power of your tongue. And I hear them tearing right. and tearing and tearing. And, and I just can't sit quiet. And folk will say to me, oh, no. Philip, if you, if you talk about these things, folk will get upset with you and won't support your missionary work. Let me tell you something. I believe if I speak for what I believe is true and right and righteousness, and I, I believe in protecting unborn babies, I believe that a marriage is between a husband and a wife. I believe that America is a unique nation in the world that has never been a country on the face of this earth like the United States of America. Do we exactly. have faults and failings? My God, we've got faults and failings. But if yeah. you think that our faults and failings are anything as bad as Germany's or Great Britain's, <laughs> all of these battles that we are having here just now, folks, let me tell you something. All of the fights that we are having for liberty here just now have already been lost in most of the world. Yeah. Exactly Scotland, right. Great Britain is called post-Christian. There's no abortion issue there. Doesn't matter. That's been fought and lost. It's gone. And and when they were talking about the in America, they were talking about you know church services. Should we open the church? When when will we? Say, I never heard ever in all the discussions that I watch in the morning. I get up very early and watch British news because it's six hours ahead of us. I never heard one mention of the church in in all of the news programs I watched. Let me tell you what they were exactly. concerned about. 
When can the pubs open back up again? When can we go back and drink at the pub? And, and because the church has lost its relevance in Great Britain and all across Europe. And what we are exactly. fighting for just now, my brother and my sister, is to keep us separate and distant. The same reason that these men came to this country and women came to this country for religious freedom when we, when we founded America. That's the same thing that we're fighting for right now. And if we fall asleep, if we let them over the ramparts of faith, let me promise you, we will go down in history as the, as the, the generation that lost America to the gospel, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I don't want that in my, in, in my heart and my conscience. And if you want to fight amen, with me amen. and get mad at me and defriend me, please go right ahead. But I will stand for this country because there is no nation, never in the history of the world, has been a nation like America. Amen, brother. Never. And we will, we, will, we will speak as long as he gives us breath. Amen, brother. You got me and all worked up, man. We're looking at two immigrants. <laughs> we're looking at two immigrants Yes, today. you're a Canadian, I'm aren't you? from Canada. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and, and, and Philip, i got to tell you, I had said the Pledge of Allegiance many times before, but at my citizenship ceremony, oh, I man. quoted the Pledge of Allegiance as a citizen, and I started weeping, and I said, Where's this emotion coming from? I didn't even know that I would feel so emotional about it. But I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United yeah. States of America. It, there's something powerful. Now, listen, Absolutely. If, if America is such a desperate, evil, racist, horrible place, why do millions of people want to come here? Absolutely. <laughs> because they know better and you know better. America is the land of the free, the yeah. land of opportunity, the land of possibility. The Absolutely. land of dreams Absolutely. and freedom. Absolutely. And God bless America. God bless Absolutely. patriots. God yeah. bless Philip Cameron for his boldness and his courage yeah. to speak. Now, Philip, we've only got a few more minutes. I'm not interviewing you, but I hope you'll be since you're on a page called Trump and the Great America, 2.1 million followers. Please take a moment and tell us about your missions work and what you're doing in Europe and around the oh, world. It's absolutely that's incredible. Kind of you. In Moldova, in Eastern Europe, Moldova and Ukraine and others, but we're, we, that's where we work. When a young, young person, boy or girl, is 16 in the orphanage, they put them on the street and traffickers get them and they use them 30 to 50 times a day. And what we've done is we have a village in Moldova called Vatra Village and it's a beautiful place. Um, there's a picture of it right there. And we take these kids Beautiful. from the orphanage and take it into our village and we put them back in school because they've had no value to, they, they haven't even thought of it going to school because they're just an orphan and they're, they're told every day, your mother doesn't want you, your father doesn't want you, you're nothing, you're garbage, you're trash. And when they come to us, the houses that we have are nicer than my own house, believe it or not, they're beautiful. <laughs> and we put them back in school and the, the miraculous thing, that's a, that's a young couple, a, a brother and sister. Tudor is the boy and Anna is the, le the left. And they are, they are just typical of the kids that we have in our... They got all their clothes from the garbage dump. That's where they used to get their clothes from. And their mother would, would be beaten by their father continuously. And that's just, that's just two that they just put up there just now. But what happens is, and what's happened is, we, we've, we've, when they come to us, they become part of our family. They call my wife Chrissy, mom, and me dad. And what's happening is they go back to school. And, and they, they learn about the gospel and, and the grace of Jesus and what he's done for them. So we turn orphans into sons and daughters. And then we turn sons and daughters into missionaries. And uh, it's a tremendous... I've never seen anything like it in all my years of traveling and ministry and mission work. I've never seen anything that elevates the, mission, the, 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 or, the orphan into equal status with the missionary. And um, at this time in Moldova, it's closed down with, with COVID. And our kids have been given special um, um, licenses from the government to go out into the villages. In fact, that girl there, Nadia, that's bending over in, that, in the back of that van, she's our head, our head girl in Moldova. She, she leads the ministry. And uh, she said to me, she says, Dad, they won't die of the virus. They'll die of hunger. So these orphans that have, that have been starved and beaten and abused themselves are now the very instruments of God's love and mercy and grace, and they go out and feed the broken. And uh, last, last week, last Friday, I believe it was, or Saturday, um, we went to a new orphanage, 
uh, up in a, a town uh, a ways from Kishno, the capital. And we sat down with a whole bunch of kids. That's the picture right there. The girl in the white um, sweater and Tudor. Tudor is sitting next to her on our left. All of those kids around that table are orphans that are about to be put on the street. And we have 20 kids right now. We've had, we've had, one of our homes in Moldova, in Vatra village, is finished. In fact, they're putting the kitchen in today and is ready to be occupied. And um, these houses cost us about $3,000 a month to run. And what we're praying for is that we can find 100 people that will give a dollar a day, $30 a month, to allow us to open these homes, for a, a new home for these kids. So if I were to say to your audience and say, listen, would you save 20 kids' lives for a dollar a day? Amen. Would you give a dollar a day to save 20 lives? And um, that's, that's what we're challenged with at this very moment. It's powerful, Philip. And, and you can bring this team to your church. They do travel and speak oh, and share the story. Yes. And yes. your, your heart will absolutely melt and then grow five times as big as you meet these <laughs> tremendous young people that are being rescued from the streets absolutely. of, of uh, Europe. It, it's an incredible opportunity. Yeah. Support this ministry. I, I, I give it absolutely my best endorsement and encourage you to support this ministry. And, and, They've been to the church I've pastored. and We're uh, coming back. We, we've got to come back again. It's been a while. Absolutely. But let, let me say this. Um, if, if, if Philip, you can put the addresses up so folk can contact us, if you could, and I'll, yes. and I'll put this up, and I'll, uh, and I'll say this. If you put up, um, it's, it's P.O. Box. The Orphan's Hands is the name of our organization, and you can make any check out to The Orphan's Hands. You can go online to theorphanshands.org forward slash give, or you can send an offering by mail to The Orphan's Hands, P.O. Box 242248 <laughs> in Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. Or you can call the office right here, right now. Someone's waiting for your call, 334-456-5544. And by doing so, you are literally being the hand of God extended into these kids' lives. And thank you, Miles, for um, allowing me to share that with your vast audience. I really appreciate that so much. It's a delight to be with you again, Philip. We pray for you, we honor you, and we, we support your ministry. Thank you thank again. You. For well, we are going to, this is, speak, this is the quickest the hour. When I talk to you, it's the quickest hour of my life. I tell you, if I was with you all the time, I'd be a hundred years old in, in, in a couple of days because it's the <laughs> fastest. It goes past in an hour. And, um, but I, I so honor you for having the courage as a, a, as a pastor of a local church to see injustice and see right being portrayed as wrong and have the courage of your conviction to stand up and say, no, 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 this is what I believe is true, and, um, and influence people. You are an influencer in the world today. And you can follow Pastor Miles on, on um, Trump. It's called Trump and Trump. the Great America. Trump America. and the Great America. And it's on Facebook. We'll have that in, in, the, in the comments underneath. And why don't, you, why don't you get on there and like that page and sign up and be a subscriber, a su subscriber. And he is always full of relevant, fresh, current event stuff that's happening. His church is in, or his organization is Miles Homes Revive USA. And it's in Collinsville, Illinois, 1105 Beltline Road in Illinois. And the phone number is 618-334-1000. It's a great number. And www.reviveusa.net. And I encourage every one of you to support this ministry. Because I'll be honest with you, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. You should, you should see some of the mail that I get and the comments I get. Because I believe and stand for what I'm from, from pastors. That will say, oh, this is, you know, I don't believe in what you believe. And, and, I, and I think... Wow, how, how can that be? Because I don't believe in killing a, bo a baby inside its mother's womb. I believe that a, a marriage, you know, a husband and a wife, uh, you know, uh, tell, me, tell, me, tell me where I'm wrong. And I, exactly. I, this is not about Trump. Let me tell you, listen to me. If, if it was another man that was standing for what he stands for, I'd be supporting him. And yeah. this next election, Trump will win or Trump will lose, and the, the fight will continue, and it'll be someone else who'll pick up the standard and keep yeah. on believing. And you'll find me sitting here just as forceful for anyone. If it's Cruz, I'm all for Cruz. If, if he's the man that God's, God's got next in line, I'm all for him, as long as they stand with what I believe. 
So it's not about personalities. It's not about the ticks and the, the foibles and the things that bug me about Donald Trump. And I get bugged about Donald Trump. Don't misunderstand me. But what he stands for and what he believes is what I believe. And for that reason, you are about to see the Supreme Court have another one or two or possibly three justices that will be chosen. Yeah. And if, if we can, if, if, if the conservative agenda and, and the, 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 the Christian part of America can appoint two or three new justices, what that oh, does amen. is it will change the entire history of America for 50 years to come. I'll be dead and gone. Exactly. But what I'm believing for today will benefit my kids and my grandkids. And that's why you are important and Miles Monroe is important, and I'm important to speak up and not sit and let them speak up. And we sit with a silly smile on our face. And um, so Miles Holmes, we love you so much. We thank you. Love God you, Philip, for as you. well. Thank you for being with me today. Let's do this again soon. <laughs> Absolutely. God bless. Keep we in love touch. you. Thank you. God bless you. And uh, that. Miles Holmes is a great man of God and, and a, a, a brave man of God. And he, he support his ministry because he is one of us that's believing for righteousness in America. On Monday, I've got a dear friend that you're going to love him. His name is Mondo De La Vega. And he is one of the co-hosts of the Jim Baker program. And his testimony, this, this crazy godly man... Um, where he came from is insane. He was in, in the gang. I mean, he literally was a, 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 a leader of one of the big gangs in, in the, East, the West Coast in Los Angeles. And uh, God used him when Jim Baker had, had been put in prison and let out. Jim was staying at the Dream Center in California. And Mondo was his next door neighbor in the room next to him. And Mondo went after Jim Baker and when Jim had given up hope and, and thought there was no point in keep on going, Mondo had some incredible, I'll, I'll let him tell you on Monday, you'll love this program, you'll love this man. He's one of my great friends. Thank you so much. That'll be next Monday at 10 o'clock. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you allowing me to sit here and rant and rave and bring folk that I believe have a relevant voice in today's world like Miles Holmes. That is what is important. And uh, we just appreciate your support. Please pray. We are believing for a hundred people in the month of June to give a dollar a day. If we can get a hundred folk to give that gift of uh, uh, $30 a month, you can, you can give $30 a month and help us and allow us to open up another home at Vatra Village and take 20 young folk in and change their lives for eternity. What you sow, what you make happen for someone else, God will make it happen for you. And that address again is uh, www.theorphanshands.org forward slash give. Or you can give by mail to the Orphan's Hands PO Box 242248 in Montgomery, Alabama 36124 zip code here. Or you can give by phone 334-456-5544. And uh, someone is waiting for your call right now. And we need you to help us in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for being part of today's program. I hope we inspired you and provoked you and got you mad just a wee bit to stand up for what you believe in and um, watch God do something miraculous in America. He's never failed us yet. We've come through some dark days in the past and we're going to come through these days and we're going to be all right. We are going to be all right. You watch and see. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their Heavenly Father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. 
God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.